Hello and welcome to another ARM Software Developer Breakdown. My name is Robert Wolf, and in this video, we are once again joined by Angel Rivera, Developer Advocate at CircleCI, to continue building out his CI CD pipelines demo. If you missed any of the previous parts to this series, cruise on down to the description and find the part that you're on. All right, here we are with Angel once again. So in the last video, you implemented ARM compute within the config file, the config YAML file, showing us how to define ARM resource classes, along with explaining all the other bits of code that you had going on in there. What do you have in store for us today? Yeah, so what we're gonna do in this section is essentially execute the code that I just discussed in the previous section. The pipeline will be triggered by code changes, right? And the only way we can get code changes to appear upstream in a repo is by doing a git commit and push. So let's go ahead and open up our app.js so we can change some code. What I usually do is just change, for this application, just change the version number since this is a demonstration. But if you were to change you know, code or add more code, this is kind of the trigger. Uh, I just wanted to show you exactly how you would trigger a CICD pipeline using um, a git push commit, a commit push upstream. So I made some changes. Let's go ahead and jump over to the terminal. Let's clear this out. So I want to basically do a git status. We do have some changes on our application. And what I'm gonna do here is just basically create a, a, a commit for this change. Let's just say we're gonna do change to version number 0.0.6, all right, to give it a nice, uh, a commit message. Now, we've committed the change locally, as we do right in our normal developer workflow. But now I'm going to trigger the pipeline because I'm going to uh, push this change, this commit upstream. So once I do a git push upstream, uh, it's been pushed to the to the re to a GitHub repository. Now I'm going to jump into the CircleCI platform. Let's jump over to our CircleCI project for ARM executors. As you can see, CircleCI has detected my code changes. Um, and you can tell by uh, the commit message, right? Remember, update the version to this number, uh, 0 0.0.6. My pipeline has, again, been triggered. And remember, I was talking about the pipeline.number. I just wanted to show that to you here. This is the identifier for this specific pipeline. As you can see, right, they're just uh, auto-incremented uh, integers. Uh, but again, that's where that pipeline.number comes from. Let's go ahead and look at how our pipeline is actually functioning. Uh, I'm gonna jump into the build Docker image section. Uh, as you can see here, right, the, the system is initializing our runtime or our executor. As you can see, right, we have an ARM Linux medium, which is the one uh, or the, the resource class and the executor that we defined in our pipeline. And it's, you know, showing up in the dashboard as, the environment where our code is actually running. The CircleCI uh, dashboard has a lot of information on it, but I'm not going to cover all of it. I just wanted to show you, you know, how these things are happening uh, in the dashboard, how the automation is executed by simply pushing your code to your code repository. And CircleCI basically, you know, identifying uh, the config.yaml file and then executing upon those directives within that. As you can see, we've actually pushed our Docker image up to Docker Hub, or at least our pipeline did. And by the way, I'm not hosting any infrastructure, right? Like this is all on the CircleCI platform, which is kind of like the power of CircleCI is, you know, you can bring continuous integration, continuous deployment to your organization without having to run costly uh, infrastructure. Uh, you know, we take care of all that for you. So your developers and your operations teams can focus on, on the things that matter, which is getting your code released to your customers as quickly as possible. Let's take a look at our pipeline. Um, right now, all the steps basically have, have completed. Um, and in this case, we're going to talk about or take a look at the AWS deployment. So as you can see in this job, um, we basically executed all of the commands within the deploy AWS ECS job, right? That was in the configuration file. Uh, I can show you that real quick. But all of the things that are happening inside of this job have occurred, right? And they, they've successfully been completed, which is the goal. You want those green builds. So if we jump back over to the, the, the dashboard, I just wanted to show you one other thing here. Remember when I was talking about environment variables, 
Um, you know, we have some sensitive data in our environment variables. And then we also have uh, Circle CI specific environment variables that are only defined and, and uh, yeah, injected into the runtime. Remember we talked about, uh, I talked about uh, repo name, right? Uh, Circle CI underscore project repo name environment variable. This is where you could actually see what's happening. And if you look here, we have some very sensitive environment variables, right? You don't want this stuff being published in clear text, which is another layer of security from Circle CI, right? You can define sensitive data and environment variables, and we will not publish them publicly in clear text. So, you know, you can take some solace in that we take security very, very seriously. But I just wanted to show you that, you know, all of those environment variables that we built are per very much protected throughout the CI CD process on the Circle CI platform. So that's where you can kind of check out your environment variables. Let's check out um, the actual deployment. Right? We've actually kicked off Terraform and Terraform's, you know, using all the credentials and all of the variable values that we've submitted to it. And it has completed successfully meaning it's created all of this infrastructure for me uh, so that I can deploy this Docker image that, that is ARM capable to an ARM powered infrastructure, which is in this case, uh, AWS Elastic Container Service that is powered by AWS Graviton2 ARM compute nodes, right? So my cluster, the underlying nodes that form my cluster are ARM compute nodes. Now that we have you know, pretty much all the infrastructure up and running, the Docker container uh, was pushed up to Docker Hub. It's ARM compatible. Our ARM infrastructure is pretty much set and hopefully ready to go. We should go ahead and test and make sure that you know, it's all functioning. Uh, before we get into that though, let's go ahead and take a look at what a Elastic Container Service cluster looks like, right? So if I click in the ECS cluster area, uh, we have, basically two clusters. Um, this one, this default one, ignore it, but the one that I created in my code is this app arm V8. So let's go ahead and click on that. As you can see, we have a cluster that's up and running, right? Now an ECS cluster has a few components to it and I'll just quickly cover them because I want you to be to under, fully understand what's happening here. So when you have an ECS cluster, you need compute nodes, right? Underlying compute nodes to, to basically form your cluster. Uh, so let's take a look at the ECS instances. Right now, I have only two. I only need two for this demo. But if I click into that, right, into the instance itself, I just want to show you one other thing. So because I implemented all of this in a Graviton2 instance, which is ARM capable, I just learned this the other day from the Amazon folks. Whenever you see a G in the instance type, that is an indicator that the instance, instance type is a Graviton2 instance type, which means it's an ARM instance type. So if you're ever like, you know, trying to figure out how or, or quickly look at, you know, these instances, if you see a G, that means it's an ARM capable or Graviton to compute node on AWS. So we know that our code or uh, cluster has the ARM compute nodes. That's great. We should be able to run our, our code now uh, seamlessly in this ECS cluster. So the other thing I wanted to call out to before I jump into checking if the application is working, you definitely want to take a look at uh, tasks, right? So these tasks are essentially what gets deployed. So this is uh, a deployment, a task is equivalent to a deployment command, right? So right now you can see that our task for our new application has been deployed, right? So this inactive one was a previous task that's been running in the cluster. As, as you know, right, deployments happen gradually over time, you just don't deploy everything at once. With ECS, you can tell the system, okay, deploy half of the new code and keep the other folks on the old version. The reason is you wanna drain and stop the usage of the previous version in a controlled manner versus just cutting them all off and they could be in the middle of a transaction or whatever. So, you know, a draining is essentially a controlled release of resources as, as users start to complete their transactions the system slowly tears it down. So we have a deployment here. If I refresh, this is probably all right, still inactive. So you have one and one. But at the end of the day, I just want to show that you know a deployment is also known as a task. So there's no confusion there. So let's go ahead and test. I grabbed the, the URL for my application load balancer for that ECS cluster. Let's go ahead and check. And as you can see, right, we have version six here. So our application is actually running, and I'll re re refresh again, it's actually running 
in this Amazon ECS cluster, which is pretty awesome, right? So our, our pipeline, and we take a look at that, has basically right created all that stuff using infrastructure's code and Terraform, and it, it stopped, right? So if we take a look at our pipeline, uh, all of these things ran in parallel, as I said before, but I did have a dependency on that approved job, remember? Um, so what I did was I stopped this thing uh, in the middle because I want to, uh, it is a demonstration, I want to show you the power of the approval process, right? So normally I would have this all happen at one time because I understand that my application has been deployed, it works, and my deployment's good. So I know with confidence that I can deploy this to another Docker or a, a container-based solution like ECS or even Kubernetes, right? I know my container works in the environment that I'm targeting. Now, uh, what I wanna do here is just basically destroy all of that infrastructure because why spend the money? We don't need that stuff laying around. Plus it can cause security issues too, right? So if you have infrastructure that's just sitting around, not being monitored, uh, you're wasting money and also uh, potentially exposing yourself to security incidents. So I'll, I kicked off the approve destroy button. Now, right, the destroy command has been executed and all this is gonna do is kick off the destroy job that we have in our CICD pipeline. And all of this infrastructure should be terminated. Now this takes a few moments because there's a lot going on in the on the back end at, in, in the AWS cloud platform. So um, what we're going to do is kick off the destroy and then come back when it's all finished. So our pipeline has completed destroying all the infrastructure that we built uh, in the previous examples uh, or in the, in the previous pipelines, I should say. Um, so now uh, infrastructure as code and Terraform have taken over kicked off a destroy command to destroy all that awesome infrastructure that we built earlier. Uh, I just wanna verify number one with making sure the app is, is actually gone. And yes, it's gone because it redirected to Amazon's portal. Um, but then we're gonna go ahead and check here to make sure that those tasks are gone. There's no more services, right? Uh, and then if we go back to our cluster, as you can see, we just have our default cluster. Uh, the ARM cluster for ECS has been destroyed completely and all of the associated ARM Graviton2, AWS Graviton2 compute nodes have also been destroyed, right? So everything that Terraform had built previous has now been destroyed. And that's how you basically implement, uh, you know, ARM architecture and ARM, ARM uh, re resource building uh, within the CircleCI platform. It's very simple, right, to add whenever you want ARM type capabilities. Just remember that you need to define your executor as an ARM dot medium or large, and you're off and running. Awesome, Angel, I love this demo. Very cool to see everything come together here at the end. In the, la in the next video, we'll be tearing down the demo by providing a quick summary of the entire series, and we'll also provide you with any additional resources just in case you had some trouble following along. As a reminder, don't forget to like the video, follow our channel, and stay tuned. In the next video, we'll be closing out the series.